Hey guys, in this video I'm going to review this DJI power station. We're going to do load stress capacity test. We'll charge this from solar. If you're interested, let's jump into the video. In the package we're getting power station, 100 watt solar panel, and then I got a few adapters. This adapter is to charge power station from an accessory port or from solar panel. On the one side we have SDC light connector, which is going to power station right here, and other side has MC4 connector. Then we're getting this adapter SDC to accessory port and I got protective bag. For input and output ports, we have on the left side two AC plugs, then we have two USB ports, USB-C ports, then we have charging port, button for slow and fast charging, and two SDC ports. One is SDC standard, second is SDC light. On the right side of our station, we have ventilation for fans, and uh, that one is for attaching uh, additional accessories such as MPPT charger. On the left side, we have ventilation window as well. Here's the all specification for power station. Just to highlight, to charge from a solar, we can use maximum 800 watts, but we will need additional MPPT charge controller. For AC output, we can do 2.2 kilowatts continuous power. USB-A rated for 24 watts and USB-C maximum is 140 watts. Capacity of this power station is 1024 watt hours. Battery chemistry is LFP and according to DJI we can get 4000 cycles if we're going to discharge power station with 1 kilowatt and the charge with 600 watts. Now I'm going to measure how many watt hours I'm going to get from AC outlet. I'm going to discharge it with 300 watts. Let's see how many watt hours we're going to get. The station just shut down. Let's see how much we got. Eight hundred forty-six watts, and from USB ports, I'm using one seventy-three watts. I'm charging laptop, DJI drone, and remote control. Let's do load test. I'm gonna draw two point two kilowatts, which is the maximum continuous power for power station. So we're slightly more than two point two kilowatts. Right now it's nine p.m. Let's come back in twenty minutes and see how power station doing. And I'm running for 20 minutes and it's pretty impressive. 2.2 continuous kilowatts for one kilowatt hour power station. It's a lot of stress on the battery. It did pass the test. At the full 2.2 kilowatts load, we're getting 121 volt AC output and the pure sine wave. Power station 0%. I'm going to charge this and see how long it's going to take. Switch to the fast mode. Right now it's 7.30. What is interesting, it's pretty quiet when it's charging. Charging just stopped, we're at 100%. Right now it's 8.45 and uh, it took 1.185 kilowatt hour. With a power station, I got this uh, solar panel, it's 100 watt. And I must say it's a really stylish solar panel. Right here is the cable. And usually with a solar panel, we have MC4 connectors and then MC4 to XT60 adapter. In this case, we have XT60 adapter, which is really convenient. To charge power station from solar, we don't have anywhere uh, XT60 connector, so we need to use adapter, which is right here. And um, this adapter is to charge station from an uh, accessory port or from solar panel. From this adapter, we can only use um, up to 30 volts, 8 amps. So using this adapter, we can only charge station with uh, 240 watts. So now I'm going to connect this to SDC port. And other side is going to be XT60. Let's set up solar panel and see how much we're going to get. That's really interesting. We're getting 95 watts out of 100 amp panel. 
And this is a pretty good result because usually for this time of year, it's about 80% of nominal wattage of this panel. Let me try to connect 250 watts panel and see what we're gonna get. see any input and with the bigger panels it looks like it's not gonna work because I think it's over voltage protection so if I measure voltage on this panel it's 35.5 volts and smaller panel is 25 volts so it looks like it's whatever we see here 30 volts we cannot go over this and I just double check specification for MPPT charge controller and um, we cannot exceed 30 volts. So panel was 35 volts, so station went into protective mode. To charge with a 400 watts, we'll need to use this MPPT charge controller and connect four 100 watt panels. Right now it's 9 a.m. and I want to test one more item. I know some power stations struggling to charge from solar and uh, do output to AC at the same time. So I'm just gonna connect two chargers and we're getting 86 watts from a solar. Let's see how it's gonna work. Yeah, and it's working fine. We're getting input 85 watts and the charging with 113 watts, no problems. For the stress test, I don't have big saw anymore. So we're just going to use this seven inch and uh, it's uh, 120 volts, 14 amps. Let's see how it's gonna work. And it's definitely passed the test. And that's all tests I want to perform for this power station. To summarize all results, on the improvement side, I would like to see at least three items. First is LED light, which is really helping on the campings. Second is application where I can control and monitor power station through smartphone. And the last one, I would like to see XT60 input port on a power station. Because if we want to charge this from a solar right now, we, we have to use this adapter, small one. And uh, if we want to use more solar panels, we have to use MPT charge controller, which, which is going to be attached on the side of power station. I understand that adding XT60 port right here might increase the size of power station and weight, but still it's going to be really convenient. On the positive side, what I like about this, let's start from outside. First is a carrying bag, it's waterproof. We can leave this outside and don't worry that power station is gonna be damaged because of rain. Next one is a solar panel. I was able to get 90 watts from solar panel and right now is November 8th, so we don't have much solar available. Right now is 9 a.m. and we're getting, solar panel is shaded and we're getting 66 watts. Let me fix this. Yeah, so now we're getting 82 watts, which is about 80% of uh, nominal wattage for solar panel. And they like XT60 connector on the end, so we don't need to use additional adapters MC4 to XT60 to charge this. Then for power station itself, I was able to get 2.2 kilowatts continuous AC output power, which is great. I would not, of course, recommend to use this power station with a 2.2 kilowatts every day, because for batteries inside, it's a real stress. Then power station did pass stress test. I was able to run SON. Next one is DJI advertising this as a really quiet power station. And actually it is. When we're charging this with a 600 watts or discharging with a 600 watts, I cannot hear like any noise from this. Fans might start, but they are so quiet and spinning slow. So you, I cannot hear this. Next one is a charging speed button. 
we can select 600 watts or 1.2 kilowatts and this is great to see because sometimes on the campings let's say we're running generator and some loads connected to the generator if we connect power station and start charging with 1.2 kilowatts it's going to overload generator and it's going to shut down so having this button we can always switch to 600 watts and we can supply loads what we're using and charge power station at the same time and it feels like it's a good quality power station i do have few dji drones maybe for six seven years and i didn't have any problems with those drones so my assumption that power station is going to be same quality as dji building drones all right guys that's all about this video thank you for watching and i will see you in the next one